Welcome back to part three. Uh, in the first part, what we'll do is we will get this game to end, and then we will add the randomization of the cards of where they go, where the clones go on the stage. Uh, it might be a little bit tricky at first, um, but once you see how it functions and how it works, it's actually pretty easy, and it's a pretty good little trick too, I think. So let's just get this game to end. All right, we'll start with a new variable. And for all sprites, so it'll be in all lowercase letters, and we'll call it matches. And let's initialize our matches to zero. Okay, because we start the game off with no matches. And when we go down to our check, broadcast we can look here and we can see if choice one is equal to choice two well that's where we would make a match so we'll change matches by one what you'll see though is each clone that's about to delete will change by one so matches will actually go up by two every time which is no big deal okay it's fine there's 12 cards each card will go up so I'm going to hide these for now I'll leave matches up for now so we can see what that's doing. And we'll go baseball, baseball, and matches has gone up by two. Basketball, basketball, matches are up by four. Beach ball, beach ball, we're up two again, so it's six, eight, ten, and when matches gets to 12, game over. So I think the easiest way to do this would just be to come up here to our green flag. And let's just wait until matches equals 12. And when we do, we'll just show the uh, game over or the win screen. So we'll wait until. We use our boolean equals. Now booleans only return true and false. So it's going to wait until matches equals 12 is true. Okay, once matches equals 12 is true, if you remember from our setup, we hid the parent sprite. All right, so the parent sprite is hiding. So we just need to tell it to show. And switch to the you win. Now before I run this, What's going to happen is if you look over here, X is equal to minus 135 and Y is equal to minus 193. So it's down over here somewhere. We want to make sure that the U win screen goes to zero, zero. So we can actually just do that last. It'll happen fast enough. We won't see it. We'll set X to zero and Y to zero. So let's see what happens. Place the cards. Baseball, baseball. There's two. Basketball. Uh, beach ball, soccer ball, tennis ball, and you win. Excellent. So the game terminates when all the matches are complete. So that was a pretty easy addition there. One variable and then just wait until. And We could make this a broadcast if we wanted to too, but yeah, let's, let's just stick around the bottom of the green flag. Not going to hurt anybody there. All right, now let's get the fun part. Let's get these cards to randomize. In this randomization, I'm going to make three lists. All right, we're going to deal with the X and Y list first. What I'm going to ask you to do is scroll down and find your when this sprite is clicked block and just disconnect it for a second. Okay, so find when this sprite is clicked, just disconnect it. Don't throw it out, just disconnect it. Go to variables. Now your X and Y position blocks will never uh, delete. We're going to leave those alone. Okay, so we'll go to variables and we'll make a list. And it's for all sprites, so it'll be all lowercase. We'll call it X position. And I'm going to write it like that. Okay, X position. And I'm going to make a second list called Y position, Y position, Y POS for all sprites. And when we click the sprite, 
Okay, I'm going to run this here. We want to add the X and Y position of each of these into our list. That's just a quick way of getting where all these guys are right now. Okay, so I will... Um, these lists you can't hide off the screen like you could on the old Scratch. So I want to make sure I can see everybody. All right, I can see them all now. So I have X and Y. So what I'm going to do is when I click on each clone, that's why I disconnected this, I'm going to add thing to X. I'm going to add thing to Y. Now you'll notice I didn't duplicate here and then put that there because on Scratch 3 that will run that and will add thing and thing. Not that we can't delete it, but it's kind of a pain sometime. And there it just happened. So if that does happen, just tap on your reporter and close it out. All right, we're going to add thing to Y position. Now what do we want to add to those positions? We want to add from motion the X position and the Y position of each of these clones. So as I tap each one, you'll see that these will fill up and we'll end up having a length of 12 for each. Okay, so now we can take this, throw it out. All right, we don't want that anymore. We have our length, we have our X and Y positions. We can reconnect that script so that it's back to functionally working and flipping our cards over. Now let's come on up here for a minute. We're going to work under initialize for a minute. We have these 12 items in each list which correlate to where these positions are. We just need a way for the clones to uh, reference it, to access it. So we'll go to variables. And we're going to make a new variable for our, this sprite only, all caps, called position. Now there's a million ways to do this. I, this is not how I did this in my other project, but this is how I found it easier to do it in this project. That way I could leave my X and Y positions alone to start. And I don't have a whole bunch of those red add thing to blocks all over the place. Okay. So I'm going to initialize position to zero. And now we're going to make a list. Now a list will be plural. Okay, it's going to be plural of position. It will be positions. So I'm going to make a list now for all sprites. And it will be plural because it's multiple positions. So you'll see oftentimes that variables are singular because they only store one piece of data. And a list uh, typically or should be plural because they store multiple okay, well, positions. Now this gets a little bit tricky here. So what I think we'll do is uh, try to simplify, and I'll go nice and slow for this. We just need to add the number 1 through 12 into positions. So I'm going to take uh, a loop, a repeat loop, repeat 10. I'm going to make it 12. I'm going to change position by 1. So it's 0 here, then it's 1 repeat it'll be two three and each time we're going to add position to positions so whatever number it is so the first iteration first pass it'll be one it'll add one then two it'll add two three it'll add three so we'll just run that real quick and see what we get okay so we have 12x 12y and we have 12 positions okay so see how that worked problem is if I run this again, I have 24, 36, 48. So whenever you're using lists in Scratch, unlike these, X and Y, because we're never going to touch these, but since we're generating a list here, we're populating it, we need to delete it all before we populate it. 
Okay, so I just deleted all the positions, and now when I run it, I have 12, I have 12, I have 12, I have 12. Okay? Because we don't want to have any more than that. And then that should, uh, okay, that should do it for our initialization period. Let's shrink that a little bit. Okay, I'm going to hide these variables right now. I'm just going to hide these lists, and we're going to look at place cards. So for place cards, we still have the repeat three. We have the repeat four. Okay, that's going to make our 12 clones. But what we're looking to do this time is, see this change X by 90? We can right click on that. We can delete that block. Just make sure it doesn't say delete blocks five or six blocks. Just delete that one. Because we still want to create four clones and we don't want to clone anything over clone of costume six. And we also don't need this. Remember this block here after it made four. This put it to minus 135x and then subtracted 125 from y which dropped it to the next uh, row. Okay, so we can also delete. So you delete three blocks, and that's tricky, but it's one, two, three. So that's okay here, because there are three blocks put together in here. We'll delete those three. So what are we looking to do here? Well, we're looking to have uh, the position, the variable position, all caps, choose a item from the positions list then we'll delete that item from the list. Okay, so let's do that right now. So just before we create the clone, because we know that we have 12 positions and there are 12 X positions and 12 Y positions, we're going to set position to item Pick random one to the length of position. So length is how many items are in a list. But as we subtract an item, the length will change. So we'll use length of positions. So we're going to set the position to pick random one to the length of positions of positions. So we're going to pick one to whatever's left in there. We create the clone. The clone should go to that position. All right, so I'm going to scroll over here and find my when I start as clone block. And all we need these are fine. We just need to tell when I start as clone to use whatever position from the X and Y it is. So we're going to go to. item one of X position item one of Y position however we don't want to go to item one we picked a random number here so let's use that random number and tell it to use that item from the X and the Y which will be the same so if this chooses five this would go to item five five of five of X five of Y which match up Okay, so we already picked a random here. When the clone is created, it comes over here. And we are going to tell it to go to item position. And notice I'm not duplicating because I don't want to have these blocks uh, run, which is a scratch three thing. Okay, perfect. So that works good. The only thing we have here for a problem is that we're not deleting the position that we took. So we, if we pick... Five. Well, I'll pick three here. So position is three. So he's going to go to item three of X, item three of Y. No one else can go to item three. So we have to delete that item. So after we create him right down here, we're going to delete item number item number of thing in positions delete item number of position okay 
So it'll find the item that was maybe nine and it will find that and it will delete the nine. If it was position was set to 12, it'll find the 12 and it will delete the 12. So if we look at this now and let's do this here without this card. And I know it gets a little bit claustrophobic in here, at least for me anyway, but I'm trying to keep things side by side as best I can. So remember this block on the starter's clone just allows us to see the card face. Okay, so let me go here. We'll run it and we see, it looks like we have some randomization. We're random. Okay, every time I click, we're random. So if I just snap this back on, then we can see that our card game, oh, that was a lucky guess, seems to work. And if you want to see the position and everything work its magic here, uh, let me slow down this loop. Okay, so here's my place cards script where we're creating the clones. I'll add a one second wait. Okay, before, uh, right after I delete it. And we can watch these items get deleted one by one. And here they go. Oh, two by two rather. So there they go. No, no, it's one by one. And they'll all go to a random place, and they'll fill up each spot, and we have a nice randomized matching card game. So, uh, here are our scripts, so let me clean them up. Okay, we have our single green flag, our wait till the game is over. We have our initialize up here at the top. We have our setup blocks up here. I try to keep everything in order, and then does get a little claustrophobic and I'm trying to keep the zoom in so that you can see and read everything okay we have our place cards okay, our place card scripts come over here okay they run forth as they create the clones the clones then run and do their thing and then we have our script here that just waits for them to get clicked so that we can do our checking which is down here Looks like a lot, but not too bad. So I hope this helps. Uh, if you need anything else, please let me know. If you end up making any matching games, I'd love to see them. Okay, keep scratching. Hope everybody's safe.